So I want to clarify that for this video that I'm going to make, that I'm going to be speaking of my experiences alone. I cannot speak to everyone that has mental illness in the world. That is not my job, and that is not something that I wish to do. This is personally my experiences as Rylan Taylor and how I experience the world through the lens of having different mental health conditions. I do want to do a trigger warning for self-harm and suicidal ideation brought up in this video. Um, if you feel that you are not in a place to listen to these um, topics, I freely um, invite you to click off. Hey everyone, it's Rylan. Um, it is August 15th, 2018 at 835 in the morning. Again, another early morning video but I couldn't sleep and here I am. So I made a video asking what do I make videos about? And I had two people respond, which is great. Like that's better than no people. So thank you to both of you. And one of my friends on YouTube, his name is Philip Andrew. Hi Philip. Um, suggested that I maybe talk about like because um, I opened up about my bipolar mania a couple weeks ago that I talk about my um, maybe most recent about about with depression or the worst that it's been and I thought that it would actually be kind of interesting if I maybe lotion. I maybe started like a small series called the sickest I've ever been and basically what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight the different mental illnesses that I have because I do struggle with a lot of mental illness and just kind of talk about um, like the lowest parts of that and how these disorders have like greatly affected my life and so the easiest one for me to access and the one that he suggested is depression. So I'm going to talk about that. So I think just the format of these videos, like I made a list right here of all of like some of the different um, disorders that I struggle with. And it could be at least a one, two, three four part depending on if I wanted to talk about other stuff like four part series so we'll see so for those of you that don't know me hello and thank you for watching my channel as I said my name is Rylan um, I live in Riverdale Bronx New York which is like a cute fancy little neighborhood um, and I live alone um, I'm in my late 20s and I'm a professional actor um, Besides that, I identify as transgender gender fluid, simply meaning that I identify as both male and female, and sometimes neither or both all at the same time. Um, so my gender expression can vary from a very feminine presenting way, makeup, wigs, all that good stuff, to a more androgynous state, which is this. Um, so I'm just going to hop right into it and... I think what I want to do is pose this as like someone were to ask, so what's the sickest you've ever been? So the sickest that I've ever been with depression and the worst bouts of depression, the first one that comes to mind that that might be the absolute worst, um, at least definitely the longest range would be... Um, <clears throat> like December 2007, 2016 um, until like March 2017. Basically what that looked like for me is I have bipolar disorder as well as borderline personality disorder. Um, basically my borderline personality disorder affects me in the sense that I have self-injurious um, behavior. I mean, I'm clean right now, but that's a big part of the story that I'm going to talk about. And then with bipolar, just like struggling with depression in general. So basically what catalyzed this almost year-long depressive slump in my life, 
I can't even call it that. Whatever is lower than a slump, hole, grave, left more than a divot, like just depressive episode in my life is I struggled with something that had to do with my borderline personality disorder, which was simply someone not texting me back. I really struggle with people not responding to texts. Um, I know to some people that might seem really trivial, but as a part of my illness, that's something that struggles, that I struggle with because I have fears of abandonment and I, uh, my brain likes to convince itself that if someone doesn't respond to my text right away, then that means that they are ignoring me, that they hate me, they don't want to be my friend anymore, etc. So it just kind of turns into this really negative, like, self-hatred. Um, so someone didn't text me back, and I remember the first time I self-harmed, oh, like, trigger warning, self-harm, um, the first time I self-harmed was on December 8th, um, because someone didn't respond that I had romantic feelings for, and they waited 13 hours to respond to me, and for some reason, my way of coping with this was to hurt myself and I specifically cut my wrists with a knife which the behavior in and of itself is different in the sense that like it wasn't with the intention to like die I guess like this was intentionally like I want to hurt myself and like I think this is gonna help so unfortunately, that December 8th episode of self-harming lasted me all the way until March 2nd, 2017. I self-harmed for a total of three months, which to some people might sound like not a lot, or it's like, oh, that's not a big deal, who cares, like, he's fine. No, those three months were absolutely horrific, they were dangerous, they were life-threatening. Um, it's honestly a grace by God above that I am alive on this earth, able to make this video and speak to you right now. Um, there weren't really any close calls. Like I never personally like nicked a vein or anything, but like I very well could have because I was dissociated and I was drinking when this was happening. So the self harm aspect of this depressive episode was extremely frightening and you know, very dangerous. In addition to that, I was drinking a lot. I was definitely really struggling with alcohol consumption and what was considered normal. But I definitely had an extremely unhealthy relationship with alcohol. And um, looking back on those moments is really difficult to see just how low I was. Um, so that depressive episode lasted like almost a year and also the impetus for that that made things worse was I left my acting conservatory. Um, I was one semester short of graduating from my school, but due to the extent of the self-harm that manifested in literally a week because I wanted, I self-harmed in December and I want to say school ended like for Christmas break at the end of December, maybe January, but I was just hurting myself so much that like, I just, I, I couldn't, I just, I, I couldn't. And the worst part about this episode is that I felt like I wasn't a human being anymore. I remember so many nights calling my dad, you know, at like six in the morning cause he's an early riser. <clears throat> And just crying and saying that I didn't know who I was, that I had completely lost myself and I didn't understand who I was. And having to make those calls in the morning and tell my dad that I had hurt myself again and hear the pain in his voice and hear that helplessness. Because how are you, you know, how are you supposed to help your kid when they're across the country and they're telling you that they're hurting themselves every night? Like, you can't wrap your head around that. For many of you that are watching that video this video right now, like, you can't understand that, and even if you do or did self-harm, 
you can probably relate, but everyone's experiences are different. So I can't understand your pain and you can't understand my pain. But, you know, there is a baseline that I think we can have sympathy and compassion for people and understand that, you know, each person's journey is their own. And that when someone says that they're struggling, that you kind of just have to accept that and... And, and deal with that, which is exactly what I'm doing right now as I'm sharing my story with you. <clears throat> um, so another time that I was extremely depressed, and I'd also like to note that during this depressive episode, I was really not able to leave the house. I was in therapy three times a week. So I had things to do, and even though I was in extensive therapy, I was still hurting myself. I'm still in therapy two times a week, um, <clears throat> and I'm going to be starting a third because I'm starting an art therapy group, but yeah, it's definitely been a journey. I mean, my mental health has shifted from one thing to another. I always describe my mental health journey as being like a whack-a-mole where it's like I literally knock one problem down and I solve something like the self-harm like that has been taken care of but then it's like another problem will come up and then another and it's like I have to keep hitting things down but it's only for something else to pop up again which is extremely frustrating and exhausting and can sometimes feel extremely helpless um but another period that I can think of that I was really depressed was my freshman year of college. I remember I was struggling so much on the social front. Um, I didn't have any friends. I was in a very small exclusive musical theater program where there were only 10 of us, myself included, so nine other students. And it was a very rigorous training program. And I just like... I wasn't at the space in my life, I guess, where I was like, I don't want to say mature enough because I don't know that that's it, but I just like wasn't mentally in the spot to be able to be dealing with all those pressures, I guess. I had just been diagnosed with ADHD. I was on meds for my ADHD and that really fucked some shit up too. That can fall into my video if I make one about having my eating disorder. Um... But yeah, I was extremely depressed when I was at school. I felt as if nobody understood me. I felt like everyone hated me. Um, even though there were only 10, 10 of us in my group, there were like other groups, you know, the years ahead of us because this is college, so I was a freshman and there were sophomore, juniors, and seniors. There was about, I want to say, 40 musical theater majors, like total, and then there were the acting kids. So maybe a program of like... Honestly, maybe I said that over. Maybe there was like 40 or 50 of us total in the whole performing arts program. And I remember crying a lot and it sucked because I had to share a fucking dorm room, which is about the size of my bedroom, with another person. And I just remember crying and hiding under my blankets and... I know at the end of my depression when I'm in like a school setting that this has happened when I was at my acting school and then when I was at my acting school in college is that it gets really bad when I stop doing the work, when I would stop. It wasn't even necessarily that I wouldn't show up for classes, I mean kind of, but it was when I would stop memorizing lines for a scene or I would stop doing X, Y, and Z. Now, I'd like to clarify, I never went up for a scene in class and, like, didn't know my lines. I was never, like, on that level of being unprofessional. But that was definitely a red flag to me that when I would stop, you know, going to class and doing the things that I needed to do in order to succeed in these prestigious programs. Um... And I remember one of the worst nights when I was at college was, ugh, this hurts my heart to think about. I was at a party, and again, really bad social anxiety, so I just assume everyone hates me. 
And I believe that this belief was confirmed this night. I went to this party. Don't know who it was. It was like a theater people party. And I remember standing in the corner of the kitchen and there was like a group of maybe three people sitting at the kitchen table. And I just stood in the corner by myself facing them, hoping, waiting, praying, and wishing that these people would invite me into their conversation. And everyone just ignored me and pretended like I didn't exist as if I wasn't there. And I remember leaving the party and crying and calling my dad um, under this, like, trellis, this, like, beautiful gazebo and crying him, calling him, crying, like, very late at night, like, maybe two in the morning and just saying that I didn't have any friends which leads to my Christmas break, which was in January. And I remember being extremely suicidal and contemplating suicide to the point that I had a bottle of pills in my hand. And I remember it was New Year's and I, it had nothing to do with like, I'm going to go out with a bang, like too soon for that joke. Um, but it was like, I just, I couldn't do it anymore. Like I just, I felt so alone I felt so, so alone. And that's kind of how my manif my depression manifests itself now is that I feel alone when I get into these deep, dark things. Because anyone that struggles with depression, is that's what it feels like. It's just this isolation is that, like, no one will be able to understand your pain. You don't know how to talk to people about it. If, you know, you don't know how to make people understand the amount of pain that you're in. So that's an even more isolating feeling. Um, so I would say those are the two most difficult depressive episodes that I can, that I can think of if you were to ask me, Rylan, when were you the most sick with depression? So it would be when I self-harmed after I left my acting conservatory and then the period that surrounded me um, being in my acting school and struggling with suicidal ideation as well as social ostracization, I guess, is really no other word of what that could be called. So I hope this visit, uh, this video was informative to you. Um, and that, yeah, that you can get a perspective of what depression can look like so you guys, that is my video on depression and the worst that it's been for me. I hope that this was able to open someone's eyes or at least maybe make someone feel less alone. And if you have any comments or anything, um, obviously, you know, my comment box or my whatever is always open for people to talk about their own experiences and let me know what you think. So... Thanks so much for taking this journey with me, and I hope you guys have an amazing day. All right, bye.